If you're in the market for a three-row luxury family SUV, it doesn't get much better than the Audi Q7. This vehicle has been a well-rounded and safe choice for many years. And when Audi introduced an all-new second generation back in 2017, it basically built on the strengths of the original, which ran on the marketplace for over 10 years. Now for 2023, the Q7 stays pretty much the same after a pretty significant refresh in 2020. Audi has given the four-cylinder model more power. But as you can see this week, we are driving this 2023 Q755 TF FSI, which means it has the corporate three liter turbocharged V6, which is also electrified and within the prestige trim has most of the tech and luxury features that buyers are gonna expect. Now, as you guys know, this segment continues to grow. So the big question I went answered, if you guys are looking to spend about $80,000 on a vehicle like this, does the Q7 still represent among the best in the segment? Stay tuned to find out. So in the luxury SUV space, buyers tend to demand choices, which is why Audi continues to offer a choice of three different powertrains. This model here is the middle child within the family. Now under the hood of the 55 TFSI, we have the company's corporate three liter turbocharged V6. It's a single turbo with a 48 volt mild hybrid system. This replaced the old three liter supercharged V6 back in 2020. And the output is the same, 335 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. It got two more horsepower and roughly 25 more pound-feet of torque versus the old supercharged V6. Audi's Quattro all-wheel drive system is standard and the company has an eight-speed torque converter automatic that is putting that power to all four wheels. Fuel economy is rated at 18 in the city and 22 on the highway. Premium gas is gonna be required. This has a 22 and a half gallon fuel tank and the six cylinder model will tow a maximum of 7,700 pounds. Now, Audi says this model will get to 60 in around 5.6 seconds. It'll reach a top speed of 130 miles an hour. And as this one sits, it weighs in at just over 5,000 pounds. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the styling, which Audi gave this car a pretty heavy refresh back in 2020. So for 2023, things haven't really changed. This design is starting to get a little bit old because it's been on the market since 2016, but it has the signature corporate look of Audi with the massive single frame grille. My tester is the Prestige, but it's also missing the black optics package, which would black out the silver along the grill. You could also get the rings blacked out if you'd like. The Matrix design full LED headlights you can see has a sequential turn signal, LED low and high beams, no fog lights on the vehicle, but you do have some functional vents uh, here and there. Uh, in this gray color, it's very safe looking. It just looks like uh, a very conservative luxury crossover. So I would highly recommend going with the black optics package to give this car more of a sinister, uh, aggressive look. You can see these are the standard 20 inch uh, wheels that are kind of silver painted. They're wrapped in a pretty wide 285-45 tire. You can also get a 21 inch wheel with like black accents. When again, you go for the black optics package. This car also comes standard with a four corner air suspension so you can raise and lower the vehicle. And then the Q7 is definitely big by SUV standards, by large SUV standards. It's a Overall length is just shy of 200 inches at 199 inches long. Its wheelbase is around 118 inches long. So again, this is the biggest vehicle that Audi makes for a crossover. Now you can see here, silver painted or silver accented roof rails, panoramic glass roof, which is standard silver along the window trim. Again, you can black that out if you guys go for the black optics package. And then at the rear, you can see very uh, traditional shape. Uh, Audi is going for space efficiency here. They also offer a Q8 if you guys want a more coupe-like look, but it'll also be, it will be a smaller vehicle without a third row. You can see the taillights were refreshed in 2020. It's got their uh, LED or OLED design where it's got a sequential LED turn signal. You can also black out the chrome trim along the rear. No visible exhaust tips. A lot of brands have been going away from that because everything's going electric, but there is no electric version of the Q7 for now. Um, and then opening up the cargo area, this is where the Q7 does fall compared to its competitors uh, at 15 cubic feet of space with the third row up it is definitely on the smaller side um, which again uh, that's kind of typical underneath here you can see no underfloor storage that's going to be the sub and uh, whatnot for the bang and olsen stereo but you can raise and lower the air suspension from here you can also electrically fold the third row for this vehicle but you kind of have to sit there and hold the button which i think is kind of annoying you shouldn't have to hold the button but you can see once you fold that down it doubles the space here to just over 30 cubic feet and then if you want to fold down the second row which you can't do from over here um, that will increase the space to just over or just under 70 cubic feet of space those are decent numbers but just know that some competitors offer 10 to 15 more uh, cubic feet of space so that's one of the reasons why you might want to go with the competition 
So the Audi Q7 may not be much to look at on the outside, but this is a luxury SUV, so you really care more about the inside. Let me first show you guys the fob. This is the current corporate Audi fob. I like the size of it. It also has the typical lock unlock. Um, it also has the trunk release and a panic button. You can also use the Audi Connect app to get in, I, although I don't believe Audi offers a phone as a key feature just yet. But getting inside or opening the door and looking at the interior, you can see my tester has the Okapi brown interior. I'm probably totally mispronouncing that. But it also has the extended or the upgraded Volcana Cricket leather. This is part of a $6,000 charge that gives you more leather on the interior. Uh, and it also gives you Alcantara, suede Alcantara on the actual um, roof lining material. You can see the door panel has a soft touch injection molded plastic, although I am surprised because the dash here has leather, they should have extended it over on the door panels. I also love this kind of wood grain trim. Um, it has like a matte finish, a texture finish. It looks and smells like real wood, which is great. And then you can see here, you've got stitching on the door panel for the armrest. The window controls have a satisfyingly clicky feel. Down here, it is slightly padded, but it's more of a hard touch plastic. There's some storage. And then my tester also has the upgraded 23 speaker Bang & Olsen stereo, which sounds great. These seats also adjust, and I believe 14 different ways they are massaging. That's part of the uh, luxury package and they're also heated and ventilated. So really comfortable interior and really great seats. Now getting inside, you can see it has that typical SUV step in height where it's a little bit higher. And then when you want to close the door, it has a nice solid sounding thunk. This is built on the same architecture as vehicles like the Porsche Cayenne and the Bentley Bentayga, but it also has a soft close feature that's included with the prestige package. So you just have to click the door and it'll soft close for you. That's something you don't typically find in some competitors from Japan. But starting the vehicle up, you can see Audi puts the button right here by the shifter. And because it has that mild hybrid system, the engine just kind of fires to life without the typical starter noise, just whirs to life. Uh, and then Audi upgraded this interior a couple years ago. It has their latest MMI interface, although it is starting to get a little bit dated. I'm sure Audi's working on a new system. You have their virtual cockpit 2.0 here where it's a 12.3 inch digital cluster. You can kind of customize this and you can even put the GPS in the actual display here, which I think also looks pretty cool when you do that. Audi still does a great uh, digital cockpit system, but over here you can see it's got a two screen layout where you've got a 10.1 inch screen here at the top and includes things like wireless Apple CarPlay, but it's a wired connection for Android Auto. You can see it's a little slow at times. Like I find that when I first started up, the system takes a while, but you can see here, I'm waiting for my phone to connect. It's connected, but it's not actually showing anything there. So that's kind of annoying. And then I can touch that there and it doesn't actually come back. There we go. It's finally showing up there. Uh, and then down here, you have a smaller 8.8 inch screen that, uh, that, uh, that you can control your climate functions with. You can control the heated and ventilated seats. And then if you push this little button here on the seat, which there's a center button here and a cluster of four buttons that turns on your massage. You can see Audi offers like six or seven different levels of massage and three different intensities. So um, it's on both front seats. And then once this interface finally starts up, it looks fine. I like the kind of very clean look. It doesn't have that stick up tablet look like some other competitors. Um, but again, I don't know if the two screen layout is necessary and some competitors are going with a much larger display. Um, so if you like this, this is still looks very nice, but I think the software could use an upgrade to be a little bit quicker. And you also are still missing wireless Android Auto for you Android users out there. You can see the dash has that full leather stitching. That's part of that $6,000 upcharge for the luxury package, more wood along here. The ambient lighting also looks beautiful in this car. You can kind of customize the ambient lighting as well. And then um, I like the piano black plastic here that integrates well into the screen. And then you have more of that down here. This is the shifter that controls the eight speed auto. Put the vehicle in reverse. You can see it's got a full top down 360 camera. It's also got a full 360 perimeter scan around the vehicle, which again, this is still really good among the best in the industry for rear view camera displays. You have an electronic parking brake here. Your drive mode selector is right here. You can see Audi offers a choice between off-road, all-road, comfort, automatic, and dynamic. And there's also uh, individual setting as well where you can customize how you'd like the drive mode to be. Um, this also uh, has a volume knob, which is nice. You have some shortcut buttons here to the heads-up display, to the home link. You can turn on and off the start-stop from that button over here. And then there's a nice padded center console area here. Wireless phone charging pad. You can see my, iP my iPhone 14 Pro Max fits nicely in there. Uh, and then the seats, like I said earlier, these are the upgraded leather seats. The headrests are, they could be softer. Some competitors are starting to put pillows and whatnot, uh, but the massage works well. They are comfortably well bolstered for me. 
and they're great on longer trips. Uh, above me here, you can see lovely Alcantara headliner that's included with the luxury package, big panoramic glass roof that goes all the way into the second row. This also opens up, for those of you who prefer a sunroof that opens up, you can see it opens up only over the two front seats uh, and it opens up pretty largely. I can also click it again uh, to go the full open way, but it's pretty nice. Uh, and then looking over here in the glove box, you can see it's huge. It's uh, damped and lined with felt, offers a ton of storage space, which is good because there isn't really much storage space over here. I basically found that I have to put my phone in there. It doesn't fit in the cup holders. And then you can also have a little storage over here, but it's gonna kind of be flailing around. The heads up display doesn't include things like augmented reality. It's a little bit small compared to some competitors, but overall visibility is good. The tech works well after it boots up and there's a ton of space uh, in this vehicle. So and the build quality is also wonderful. So as a luxury SUV, Audi's flagship luxury SUV, I think it's fine, but it'll be interesting to see where the company goes for the next generation. Looking at the back seat, you can see this particular model doesn't have captain's chairs, but it does seat up to seven because there's three across here. The third row only seats two in the back. And then this brown leather also looks really nice. In terms of material, it's pretty much carried over from the front. You have soft touch injection molded plastic, more of that wood, more leather. And then Audi even puts like almost like an ashtray there, but that's probably for storage down here. It's a somewhat soft touch material. Uh, and then there's also these nice manual sunshade blockers for those of you who have sleeping kids back here and you want to block out the sun. Now getting into the second row, you can see Audi claims there's around 38.8 inches of legroom, which is pretty good. Um, this is actually a good amount of space for the segment. Uh, in terms of you know somebody like me, I can get back here and get super comfortable. There is a hump here that takes up space for the middle passenger. And then you can see Audi has four zone climate control this vehicle along with uh, three level heated seats back here, but no cooled seats. That's something you can get again and some competitors, even non-luxury vehicles like the Kia Telluride and Hyundai Palisade. Uh, there are two storage pockets. And then the cool thing about these seats is there's actually a lever here you can pull and that actually will move the seat forward and back. You're gonna wanna do that because with this seat all the way back, um, there, the third row is pretty tight. Now, there is an armrest here that folds down and gives you two cup holders which again is pretty nice. And the vehicle seems wide enough to be able to accommodate three people across. But let me move this seat forward here because this is probably where you'd want the seat to be um, to actually have decent room in the third row. Now, the cool thing is, is you can also move this middle seat, which isn't really easy to do. Sorry about that, with uh, one hand, but you can see when you move it up, there is significantly less space. Uh, and you kind of have to do that because I'm gonna hop into the third row, which by the way, Audi needs to redo the third row uh, access mechanism because some brands just push a button and everything kind of moves forward, not the Audi. You have to pull this lever over here, which clicks the seat down. Then you have to pull on this and then it beeps to let you know that the seat is not latched. And then when you do that, you can see there are a couple buttons here to fold and unfold the third row. You can do it from back here, which is nice if the third row happens to be down. But let's go ahead and hop back here because Audi says there's 29 inches of legroom back here. Oh gosh, this is tight. Now, I will say that this is with the seats slid forward. Like I said, you can also recline the seat, but you, I want you to notice the rails, they stay in place there. So even though I have slightly more legroom, it basically just gives me more knee space. But for somebody my height, I'm 5'7", I'm not tall. This is pretty small back here. It's also very narrow because again, this only seats two across. Uh, in terms of ventilations back here, there are no rear seat air vents, which is kind of the same as its competitor, the Acura MDX. Hard touch plastic materials back here. There are cup holders, but no USB-C charging ports or USB charging ports. But overall, yeah, this is pretty tight. Something like the GLS, um, the X7, or even like if you look at a Yukon Denali, that's gonna offer way more space. So that's something to keep in mind if you guys actually need to use the third row to accommodate uh, kids or even adults. This will be fine for little kids, but you have to move this seat forward to give them enough space to sit back here. So when Audi first introduced the Q7 back in 2008, it was an instant hit. Now the second generation hasn't really been quite the same with enthusiasts, but Audi has tried to rectify things over the years. Now, sadly, I wish I was driving the uh, SQ7 with the V8, the twin turbo V8. However, I am still driving the regular Q5. It got a couple of updates for 2023, mostly just trim shuffling around and standard equipment uh, that's been moved around here and there. So it's basically the same car as the 2021 model that I drove a couple years ago, but I've had a chance to drive a lot of the newer competition. So I figured let's go ahead and retest the Q7. And the one thing I've actually never done is tested it uh, in terms of zero to 60 performance. Now Audi claims 5.6 seconds for this model. 
uh, and we're gonna go ahead and see what we can get with our testing equipment here. So let's go ahead, we've got it in sport dynamic mode. Uh, we'll turn the traction control into sport mode and we'll brake torque it. Actually feels pretty quick off the line. Sounds good as well. 5.76 seconds, so that's a smidge slower than Audi's claim of 5.6, and that's a pretty level road there. Um, so decent performance. Uh, I've tested this engine in um, so many other Audi products. The company replaced the previous supercharged V6 with this turbocharged V6 with the 48 volt mild hybrid a couple of years ago, and it's been a pretty decent change. Uh, the supercharged V6 had a little more character, but I think in a vehicle like this, a family SUV, a luxury family SUV, you want the engine to kind of go around about its business without making much fuss. And that's kind of what this engine does for you. It's very smooth. It's very quiet. Uh, it doesn't make, it doesn't have much in terms of visceral feel, which is fine because again, it's a luxury SUV. Let's go ahead and try it one more time here. The Quattro makes it easy to launch this. It just kind of takes off. The eight speed has quick, smooth shifts. And we got 5.9 seconds there. So again, this is slightly more uphill. Uh, there is a four cylinder turbo that I probably would skip. Audi claims 6.8 seconds for that model. But in a vehicle like this, that's heavy, that's gonna be carrying a lot of people, you might be towing stuff with it. I'd go with the six cylinder at least. I wish I had a chance to drive the eight cylinder SQ7 with its 500 horsepower four liter. But sadly, Audi hasn't sent me that model yet. So I'm hoping it eventually makes it into my local press fleet here. But just driving this vehicle around town or just daily driving the Q7, this is where I believe most buyers are gonna really appreciate this car because it's a big vehicle, like nearly 200 inches long, but it doesn't drive as big as the exterior dimensions would suggest. Uh, the ride quality is among the most comfortable that I've ever felt. My tester has the slightly smaller 20 inch wheels without the black optics package, so it's got a really comfortable ride quality. I mean, I have it in dynamic mode right now and it still rides so smoothly, uh, but if I switch the drive mode around to comfort or auto or all road, the suspension is four corner air suspension. It just soaks up the bumps really well. It's also among the quietest vehicles I've driven. And remember, this class is full of quiet vehicles, but the Q7 still holds its own. It, it, to me, it still feels or sounds like one of the quietest luxury crossovers that you can buy especially when you're driving on the highway. This thing cruises along at 75, 80 miles an hour all day long without breaking a sweat. Uh, and in those conditions, I'm, you know, you're sitting there in supreme comfort and you're also getting a massage. I'm sitting here right now getting a massage in these seats. The massage function works really well. Here we go driving the car, accelerating more normally. You can see the engine goes to four grand there and the transmission shifts really nice. It has plenty of mid-range torque. Um, which is something that this turbo engine has more of. It has more torque than the old supercharged engine. Uh, and it makes a decent sound in just day-to-day -day driving. It just sounds like every other smooth V6 that you're gonna find in this price category. Um, now, in terms of the visibility, the Q7 is also a winner there. It's easy to see out of this car, out of the front, the sides, out of the back because of that very traditional shape. Audi's full driver assistance tech is here, uh, with, which includes traffic jam assistance, but it doesn't have actual hands-off uh, highway driving like you might find in some competitors. That's something that Audi is working on. Not quite yet available here in the US. Put my foot down here again. I find that the transmission, when it's in dynamic mode, it is quick to shift and it is quick to also downshift and get you out of those top gears. But when you have it in its normal modes or comfort mode, it definitely prioritizes um, fuel efficiency over uh, giving you, I guess, a lower gear. Uh, in corners, the steering in this car also uh, feels okay. It, it doesn't have much in terms of feedback, but the precision is there. The vehicle changes directions fine. The soft suspension, you'll notice the body lean. So sporty SUV, not the regular Q7. Go Definitely look at the SQ7 to go for the sportier option, although I haven't had a chance to drive it yet. The X7 to me is probably still sportier to drive than this vehicle. It's a BMW, it always has been. Uh, but this car is incredibly well-rounded, and that's kind of what I really like about the 
the Q7 in general. Now, in terms of fuel economy, in my week's worth of testing, when I first got into this vehicle, by the way, it was showing 550 miles on a full tank. 550 is insane. And then out on the highway, I got the best I could get was around 24 mpg. So that's two mpg better than the EPA's rating at 22. Um, it's got around a 22 and a half gallon fuel tank. Premium is required. So expensive to fill this thing up, but 550 miles of range, and that's what I've actually been getting in the real world. Uh, that's very impressive range numbers. Uh, considering you know how big this vehicle is it's got a big gas tank so it's going to be a great long distance cruiser both in terms of ride quality and in terms of range it's got enough power to get you up to speed so there's plenty to like about this car if there's one criticism i'd have is, is that it's a little mundane it's a little too stale it's boring um but that's kind of always been the audi the german car way is it's too perfect in so many regards like honestly the car's interior has no squeaks and rattles it feels really well assembled uh and you know what? It's it's just a really great car. So even though the Q7 is getting older, Audi is getting ready to work on an all new generation. Uh, this model here, if you're going to choose it, it's still an excellent option as long as you don't need a massive third row because the third row in this vehicle still remains one of the smaller options in the segment. So after spending a full week with the latest 2023 Audi Q7, as you guys know, there are a lot of new competitors in this large three row space and the Audi continues to fall comfortably in the middle. There's nothing about this car that's truly sexy that's gonna stand out, but if you live with the car for a week, you're gonna love just how comfortable, quiet, refined, and premium and well-made this car feels. I mean, it has among the best ride quality and the quietest interiors you're gonna find. Uh, the performance from the three liter turbocharged V6 is sufficient. I mean, I got 5.7 seconds, which is perfectly acceptable. Again, there is an SQ7 with a four liter twin turbo V8, if you guys prefer even quicker acceleration, and you can even step down to that four cylinder, which now makes 261 horsepower for 2023. It probably would be too slow for me, but for those of you who don't care, it should be fairly sufficient. If there are some gripes with this car, the third row is still incredibly cramped and the cargo area is a little bit small. Uh, and really, if you guys are looking to purchase this vehicle, it starts on the lower end at around $58,200 for the base version. You wanna spend about $5,500 to get the V6. So it's a pretty expensive proposition to go V6. So. For some of you, may, that may not be worth it, especially if you're okay with a zero to 60 time of around a second slower. My tester here being the Prestige trim adds about $11,000 on top of the other, or on top of the base trim, which includes a lot of stuff in here. And then my tester has a $5,800 luxury package that includes more leather in the cabin, the Alcantara roof liner, and the massaging front seats. All in, my tester is around $80,900. So just shy of 81 grand which is a lot of money, uh, but a lot of its competitors like the X7, the GLS are gonna be pretty similar, but you could also look at something like an Acura MDX, um, which will be cheaper. Um, and then that's something to keep in mind if you guys are looking to get uh, something like this for around $10,000 less. I would argue that if you looked at it like an MDX Type S, which I would say probably directly competes with this, the Acura is still about $6,000 cheaper and it'll come with similar features. It'll have more cargo space, uh, and slightly more third row seat space. So that, again, that's something to keep in mind. But with all that said, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Audi Q7. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.